Another day, another phone. Did you feel nowadays all phones are just same same? Every year it's a faster chip, better cameras, flipping, folding. Consumers tend to know what they want, but do they even know what they need? I know I'm sounding philosophical, but I find very few phones that take center stage in the media have really tried to tackle the age-old problem, battery life. Introducing to you what I call the 7K beast. This is the Samsung Galaxy M51, a mid-range spec smartphone with a whopping 7000 mAh battery. I've docked my SIM into this girthy beast and for the past week I've used it as my personal device. I'm going to run you through everything you need to know about this phone and whether you should get one too. So let's get around it. So I paid 583 Australian dollars, which is equivalent to 420 US dollars for this phone from an Australian online retailer. But the phone was sent from Hong Kong, which is very typical behavior. Interestingly, the phone is an Indonesian model. The M51 was not a global release and was not released here. But for most people, you should be able to buy one imported from an online retailer in your country. For your dollar redos, you do get a really cheap feeling box, but it does come with a charge brick and a USB-C cable. Just a heads up, if the M51 is not available in your country, the M62 and the F62 are near identical to the M51, but with the Exynos chip instead of the Snapdragon, so they could be worth a look as well. So now let's talk about build. It's a hefty device, which I've weighed in at 215 grams. Dimensions are roughly 164 millimeters tall, 76 millimeters wide, and 9.5 millimeters thick. So it is quite a girthy thing. The width is tolerable, though it does take some getting used to. Most Galaxy flagship devices do come closer to 70mm width and 8mm thickness, just as a comparison. The back is a gloss plastic, I've got it in white, which is of course going to pick up some fingerprints, but it feels alright. I do appreciate there is no camera bump on this phone, more on the cameras a little later. The rails are made of plastic, you have a volume rocker and power button on the side, which also acts as a fingerprint sensor, which does work fairly well. Over the other side, you have the dual nano SIM tray, and you can also take a micro SD card, which I think is super neat. Over on the bottom, you have a USB-C port and bottom firing speakers, and of course, a beloved 3.5mm jack. Lastly on the build, how can we forget its 6.7-inch Super AMOLED flat display with the Infinity O punch-out? It does run at 60Hz, and it's Gorilla Glass 3+. Plus. Clearly not the latest and greatest, but it works fine. This phone also doesn't have an IP rating, so make sure you don't get it moist. Alright, let's pop the trunk. So beneath the hood of the M51 is the Snapdragon 730G with the Adreno 618. So it is a mid-range chip. I have the 8GB RAM and 128GB storage model. There is also a 6GB model, but I couldn't find one here in Australia. You might have better luck. So in regards to how it performs, I'm guilty of using flagship level devices for the most part. And going into this, I was a bit concerned about performance, but was I surprised? I tested out a range of games. Call of Duty, Asphalt 9, PUBG had no starters, no lag, despite running the phone constantly in 70% performance mode. Genshin Impact was okay, definitely playable with 70% mode off, but not a buttery smooth experience. For those who love numbers, here are my Geekbench and Intuitive benchmark scores for the 730G. And lastly, in regards to day-to-day -day operation and overall snappiness, Look, it could be just placebo knowing that the 730G is just a mid-range ship. My last device was using the 888, but I did notice some apps not being that quick to open, particularly when first running them, but it was quite minor and nothing you would really scream lag about. And once they had found their home in the 8GB of RAM, it was really responsive to pull them up again. So let's talk about the cameras now. It's a quad setup on the rear. It's got a 64 megapixel f1.8 aperture, 26mm wide a 12 megapixel f2.2 123 degree ultra wide and two 5 megapixel f2.4 aperture macro and a depth. That selfie camera is a 32 megapixel f2.0 26 millimeter. In good light, photos come out with great detail and punchy color. Look at those leaves. That is a tough shot for a camera, but I think they really held out on their own. And I have to say in low light, photos are pretty good too. These photos were shot with very little light and in night mode, it was really able to brighten the picture without introducing too much noise. Here are some shots at night. As you would expect, there is a bit of noise and softening as is common with all phone cameras. Now here are some shots of my morning coffee as well as the weave on my desk mat. Looks all right to me. Now video. The cameras can shoot up to 4K at 30 frames per second. When moving a little erratically, I did notice a bit of the jello effect as you can see in the first video. But with more steady hands and walking, you can see it's a lot better. The video stabilization I would say is quite average, but probably not going to disappoint you unless you're a hardcore videographer. All in all, really impressed with these cameras for a mid-range device. Now the part that you've all been waiting for, that fat battery. It is a 7000 milliamp hour battery and in my day to day use I was able to get two and a half days out of it. And just over two have I really watched a bit more content on it. Generally speaking I use it for social media and I do about an hour and a half of YouTube watching a day. No gaming on it. 
Though full disclosure, I was running it in power save mode. Now, before you get up in arms and say that's cheating, the power save mode limits CPU to 70% and decreases brightness about 10%. Despite the CPU limit I said, I didn't see any lag or performance drop in day-to-day -day use, so I do recommend everybody to do the same if you do pick up this device. Now, unfortunately for the M51, it doesn't have wireless charging, and it only charges at 25 watts, which takes about two hours to top this thing up. You just kind of have everything, I guess. Though, I have to say, I was able to move away from a normal charging routine, which is usually overnight. Now I run the phone for two days and I charge it during the day. My routine might change once I'm back to working in the office, but for somebody like me who usually suffers from battery anxiety, I really felt good with this device. So I've given a lot of information so far, but I want to round this out with what I liked and standouts from a daily driver perspective and what I disliked or niggles about the phone. Then I'll give you my suggestion. Firstly, battery, big tick. There just isn't any other phones with this sort of spec sheet on the market. So I found this device is like copy and paste from the flagship Galaxy line you're barely going to notice a difference, and I've got to love that headphone jack. I've got a few headphones at home, so it's great to have for me, but your mileage may vary. And the phone performs well in 70% performance mode, and coupled with that battery means you're going to get excellent gaming endurance. If I were to compare the specs of the phone with ticking options when purchasing a car, this would be like ticking 90% of them, and should satisfy most people. Now, the things I didn't like. Firstly, the vibration of this phone feels really, really cheap. It honestly feels like a Nokia from the early 2000s. There was some pre-installed bloat on the phone, which is more of a nuisance. TikTok, Coin Master, Solitaire, yeah, no thanks. If I wanted that trash, I'll download it myself. There's no IP rating. Might not be a big deal for you, but look, I confess, I take my phone into the shower with me sometimes. I was thinking about taking some B-roll of me fondling this girthy thing in the shower, but maybe I'll do it when I hit a thousand subs. So make sure you like and subscribe if you don't want to miss that. Anyway, back to what I don't like. Wireless charging and fast charging definitely would have been nice to have. I think there is a heavy reliance on the battery capacity, but that doesn't mean there won't be days or times where you forget to charge it and put yourself in a pinch. There was also a niggle with screen brightness on the lock screen. Sometimes when I sneak into the bedroom when it's late, I would set the brightness to the lowest. For some reason, it's bugged on the lock screen and will have that brightness as standard until I unlock it and then it reverts to the lowest setting I had. I know it's a very specific bug that may not be relevant to you, but thought I'd call it out anyway. And lastly, I don't think the price I paid represents good value. If anything, it felt like I paid a bit of a Samsung tax, which is like the Apple tax people call it, but more in comparison with its other Android brethren, and that kind of leads me into my final thoughts on this device. This thing is an absolute workhorse, and has a certain rustic charm to it. It's a phone that can feel quite unrefined in some areas, but rest assured it never really failed on me. No crashes, no slowdowns, it just gets the job done. It's simple like that with a massive strap-on. Battery, that is. So if you're somebody that uses their phone heavily and can't get to a charger as often as you like, this phone is an endurance beast and it has all the features I think most people would be satisfied with. But for everybody else, it is missing what I call creature comforts that the flagship do tend to have, but instead gives you features from a different era of smartphones. The micro SD card and 3.5mm jack is what I mean. And this phone is also big and heavy. While I've gotten used to it relatively quickly, some of you might be opposed to its size. And to be honest with you, 420 US dollars can get you quite a lot from the Chinese brands. Got a few of them on their way, which I think would be a great alternative to the M51. And approach first world problems slightly differently. Make sure you tune into those videos to find out why. That's all from me for this one, so thank you again for watching. New videos every week or two, as long as I can find the time within my work schedule. But until the next one, bye bye.